Holy Spirit filled worship. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I come to you again with the spirit of meekness, with the spirit of meekness, Father. Just pour that upon me to help me to be more humble in your sight. And to be thankful for what you have done for each one of us. Fill this place with your power, Father. Fill us. Again, I thank you so much for who you are. Your word that is so powerful, Father, let it go through each one of us. We give you all the praise and the glory and honor for who you are in our lives, in everything that we know about our jobs, our house, our family, that we let you shine, that light that shines so bright. Oh, what a great thing it is to worship you and to honor you and to bow a knee to you. Thank you, Father. Just want to thank you so much. Prepare what you have for your saints today, Father. Bless them in the name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. Everybody hear me okay out there? Praise God. We're going, We're going to finish, finish up, up on, on life. life. Eternal, Eternal life. life. Remember, Remember Jesus, Jesus was born for one thing, thing to become the man that died upon that, on that cross, cross for each one of us. He, he came, came into, into this world to save us. us. And that's something that we should shout hallelujah about. That, that we, we have eternal life. Eternity. eternity. It's a long time. The question I guess I would ask is what steps are you taking to lay hold upon eternal life? What steps are we taking today to keep holding upon the eternal life that we're promised? Eternal life is salvation through Jesus Christ. We understand that. It comes to secure for the children of man. It is life, the life it is, the noble sense glorious divine, and eternal. We're here just as a vapor, James says. It says, why, why do you think upon tomorrow? Why do you ponder upon tomorrow? Think about it. What is your life, he says in James 4.14? What is your life? It is but just a vapor that appears for a little time and vanishes away. That, that vanishing, vanishing away, away to us means it for eternity. eternity. As, As we, we take, take our last breath here, we enter into a place that my mind, mind cannot comprehend. I can't, I can't understand the beautifulness. I see beauty here. I see beauty there. I've, I've seen, seen some, some of the beautiful paintings, God, and we've been in places where God has just showed us just, just a partial and what, what he has in store for each one of us. Whew. Just gives me chills to think that we serve that kind of a God that loves us that much. That he would take time to leave his throne, as that song says, for a sinner like me and you. Before Christ, I couldn't understand why, but after Christ, I cry. Just how beautiful he is and what he does. I just want more of a humble heart more of a meekness as I get closer to God, and it's been really happening lately. A new work he has been doing in me, and I'm just loving it. Showing us that we're nothing without him, and we need everything with him. He cares about the littlest things to the mightiest things. You know, we serve a God that created all the heavens and earth, and everything within, and everything within shouts to him for his glory. Singing sing hallelujah, hallelujah to him. That, that praise that we shout hallelujah to God. Amen. It's a, it's beautiful, a beautiful thing. Eternal, eternal life. So, so I, I, I have my... You, you know, know is anybody, anybody ever just sit back and think? Eternal life. 
I mean, I mean we, we all know that someday we're going to pass from this time, but man, eternity. Some, some of us have been here, it seems like a long, long time. But where we're going, it's not even a piece of sand next to the desert or a piece of sand next to the ocean. Eternity is so much longer. And all that time that he's going to give us in eternity to praise, to glorify him, and to be in his presence with no tears in our eyes, no pain in our body, no bad thought within the perfectness that he has given us. That's something we should shout hallelujah about. Is that we have a savior that took on a form of a baby and then grew into the mighty man that he was. Only to, to go, go to, to the, the cross at 33 years old. Didn't live, live much of a life, but lived all of the life because he was life. life. Remembering him was life, and the life was the light of man. In him is life. That's all that life is, is Jesus the Christ. It's all about Jesus. Everything we should do is about Jesus because he is life. And the life that you have right now is about Jesus. The life that you live, what he has given you to obtain, the job that you have, the things that you do, is to honor him with. The one thing we've got to remember, we need to put him first over everything. And that's life. We need to put God more so in our minds. We need to put him in our minds and our thoughts and our whole being. So when we put God there, he pours out of us. Our thoughts and our words will be more of God. We need to put God within our feet, that our path will walk his path, that it will be straight and narrow unto him. We need to put God within our hands, so whatever we touch, it will flourish of salvation to the lost. We need to put God in everything that we have, our whole total being, our mind, our soul, our strength, our body. We need to put him in. We need to put him on. We need to have God in his fullness. Amen? We need more of God going into this year than we ever needed. And the way that we do that is get on our knees and humbly just repent for him and say, Father, here I am. Forgive me for the things that you don't like. And put, and put me in, in into, into the, the place, place that you, you do like. Help, Help me to be, be more obedient to you and less of the flesh. The flesh, flesh runs us, but God has said, I give you life and I give it to you more abundantly. I give you that, that you can walk and talk and breathe and be more like my son. I have given that to you. I have clothed you even with him. Matter of fact, I have even put his spirit within you. That you, that you would choose, choose holiness and righteousness, righteousness over everything else. In John 10, 28, in John 10, 28, 10, 28, 28 it, it says, says, And I give unto them eternal life. We should shout hallelujah. I, I have given unto them eternal life, and that they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. No matter what the enemy has a store for you, no matter what he's trying to throw at you, temptations and the troubles and any person that's coming into your life, God says they will not pluck you out of my hand. Because I have given you eternal life that you shall never perish. That eternal life means everlasting existence in heaven. Wow. I get excited. It is this, but it is more. Even the union and communion between the love between God and man originated and perfected by Jesus the Christ. Wow, if we can get a glimpse of what life really is, then we would live it to the abundantly that we can. To show people that we do have a Savior, you do have hope. Speak, Speak to, to the, the alcoholic, alcoholic, there's hope. hope. Speak, Speak to, to the, the drug addict, addict, there's hope. Speak, Speak to, to the, the lost, lost, there's hope. It's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. He, he has given us hope. He can, can take, take you out from there, and he can put you over here. 
He can deliver you. I only know so well because he has me. I serve a mighty God. A mighty God. In Jude 1.21, Jude 1 and verse 21, we've had a three series upon life and we're coming to the conclusion of it. But man, I don't want to stop because eternal life is such a beautiful thing. In Jude 1, verse 21, it says, keep yourselves. Here is a command and he's telling you what to do. Keep yourself in the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. We need more of the love of God in our lives, don't we? So we will see people through his eyes and not ours. We will touch people with his hand and not our hand. We will say the things he wants us to say, not the things we want to say. How many of you said something in the flesh that you regret? And then say, Lord, I want to be more like you. Why do I jump in the flesh so fast? I want to live a more humble life. He goes on to say here, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It It is is the the mercy of Christ Christ that shows us eternal eternal life. Did Did you hear me? It's It's the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ which shows us eternal life. That's That's what what he's he's telling telling you there. He He says says that's his mercy. mercy. Aren't we glad that God's mercy is new every morning? Aren't we glad because of his mercy? I think it's a beautiful thing. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. I'll give you a moment as I take some water. 1 John and chapter 5, starting in verse 11. I'm going to give you some scriptures today to finish this series because it's a beautiful one that we have gone through. It made me look at things a lot different knowing such a love God has for me and you. Starting in verse 11, it says, and this is the record. This is something that is recorded. It's a record. Look at this. That God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. In verse 12, it says, he that has the son has life. I don't want to talk about all the other religions out there, but if they don't have Jesus Christ the way, they don't have life. There is no other way but Jesus Christ, it says here. He says here that, look, if you have the Son, you have life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. That's pretty simple, black and white. There's no gray in there. Either you have him or you don't have him. Those Those who who accept accept Jesus Christ, Christ, listen, as their Savior attains eternal life. While While those those who reject reject him will face face the spiritual death death and the separation of God, that's what that that verse is talking about. Ye that have the Son has life, ye that don't. Look at verse 13. These things have I written unto you. Who's written to you? Not the the man man that we think has written it. God has written it through man. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. In 2 Peter, it talks about they, holy men, wrote as the Holy Spirit spoke unto them. Knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is given by any private interpretation. Scriptures didn't come in the old time by the will of man. But, but holy man, man but, but holy man, man but holy man's back has the Holy Ghost went through them. They wrote down, down the word, but God says it was me that wrote them down for you. We, we have, have the living word right, right here. here. I love, I love that, that verse. And these things I have I written unto them, you that, that believe on the name of the Son of God, and that, that you may know you have eternal life. Here, here is a promise. These, these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. I've talked talked to a lot lot of people people that have doubt in their salvation. salvation. I've I've always given given this verse. Don't Don't doubt doubt your salvation because these things are written that you may know. Not that you may doubt. It never says that you shall doubt. It says that you may know that you have eternal life. I have eternal life because I have called upon the name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whosoever call upon him shall be saved. I love, I love that. that. For the, the wages, wages of sin, sin is death, but the, the gift, gift of God is eternal life. life. See, See that's, that's talking about, about if you have, have the Son, you have life, but if you don't have him, you have no life. life. That's, that's where the, the wages, wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, life through Jesus Christ, our Yahuwah, our Lord. What, what a blessing that is. Wow. Those, Those who accept, accept Jesus, Jesus as their Savior attains that eternal life. life. Remember that. Go to, Go to verse 20, 20 since you're there in chapter 5. Verse 20 says this, And we know that the Son of God has come, and we know that, that He has come and He has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true. Even the Son of Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. That's the true God in eternal life. That we may know Him. Do you know Jesus? And I'm talking on that personal relationship. Not a religious thing, but a personal relationship. Do I know Him? Because I know Jesus Christ, I have eternal life. If, if I, I pass, pass away, away right, right now, now, I will spend eternity with Jesus, and I have the faith of that because I have hope in him. I have hope in his salvation. I have hope in what he did upon the cross for you and I and everybody. All we need to do is call upon him. If you turn back to Titus, if you go to the five T's right before Hebrew, there's five T's. You've got the Thessalonians. You have the Timothys, and then you have Titus. In Titus 3, 7, in Titus chapter 3 and verse 7, it says that being justified by grace, remember the word grace? I always broke that down. Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's grace. At his, At his expense, expense we, we have, have riches. riches. Grace. Grace. At, the, the, At being justified, justified by his grace, grace we, we should be made heirs according to the hope of according to the what? Hope of eternal life. Describing, Describing believers as children, children of God who have, have the, the right, right to inherit his blessings, including not just his blessings, which he blesses us, those that fear him, he says, they, he blesses them. But not only does he, we inherit his blessings, guess what? We inherit something that's much more, and it's called eternal life. When you walk out here today, you should have a smile to your ear, to ear, going, hey, I'm, I'm never, never doubting I have eternal life because of what he did, never what man has done. Never anything, anything that we can do, it's always what he has done. Since you're in Titus, go over a couple more chapters, chapters back to the first chapter. Chapter 1 and verse 2. 1 and verse 2. It says, in hope of eternal life, which, which God, God that cannot lie. Underline that. You serve a God that cannot lie. He, he will not lie because he cannot lie. lie. He, he which God, God cannot lie promised before the world begun. Before this age, before this world, he promised eternal life. Try to wrap your brain around that one. It's a beautiful, beautiful statement. statement. Wow. wow. Before, Before the beginning. The fact that, that our salvation is entirely God's, God's work. We, we cannot, cannot earn it through good works or religious rituals, but it is the gift received through faith in Jesus Christ. By grace you are saved through faith that not of yourself. It's, it's only through faith by Jesus Christ. Christ. We've got to understand there's nothing we can do to earn salvation. salvation. 
There's so many different cults out there, so many different religions, there's so many different beliefs. I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And sometimes we get in there only if I can do this. There's nothing you can do, he already did it all. He said it's finished. There's nothing you can't work to earn salvation. You have to work out your own salvation by confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful statement there. If you jump back, a book or two, you'll go to 1 Timothy, chapter 6. I love this one because we have talked about the very first thing in this. 1 Timothy, chapter 6, and starting in verse 12. Am I going slow enough for you guys? Okay. In verse 12, it says, listen to this. Fight the good fight of faith. It didn't say fist to cuff. It says the fight of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Remember that. Those that come unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. What is faith? What is hope? What is it? Jesus. We must have faith in Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's even that. He's, He's in everything. everything. He, he is everything. everything. Man, when we get our eyes wrapped around him in our hearts and everything we have, it would bring us so much closer to him. And then look at the next, it says, and thereafter it says, it says, lay hold on eternity life. Lay, lay hold on to eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Is our profession of Christ a good profession? Are we ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Or we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Are we letting Jesus flow out of us wherever we go? Do we hinder him? Do we quench him? Do we put him away when we go places we don't want people to know? Or do we say, no, I'm not ashamed of that gospel because it's the saving grace to me. This is the ultimate goal for every Christian is, is to, to receive, receive the gift, gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. This, this is our ultimate goal, goal is that beautiful gift that he gives you and me and a gift. If I reached out and said, hey, here's a gift, and I handed it to you, what do you have to do? You have to reach out and grab it. You have to take it. You have the choice of taking life or you have a choice of rejecting life. I believe everyone in here has received life. Because they, they reached, reached out, out for life. life. We're, We're going to finish this topic with something, something that's beautiful. beautiful. This, this is why your name, name is in there, because of Jesus Christ. Christ. It's, it's called, called the Book of Life. Has anybody ever heard, heard of the Book of Life? life. There's, There's a, a book, book of Life. And my, my name's, name's in there, and your name's, name's in there. And when, when he, he opens, opens it, he's, he's going to go down and he's going to see those names. Because, because our, our name is written in his, his book of life. Wow. wow. The book, book of life contains, contains the names of those that are destined, destined to eternal life. life. That's, That's what, what that means. In, in Exodus 32, 32, it's really easy to remember, Exodus 32, 32 verse 32. You read, you read the verse above it, and I mean, I mean below it, you see what's going on here. This is Moses talking to God. And yet in this verse, in verse 32, as you turn into chapter 32 of Exodus, I'm getting better at slowing down. <laughs> you can only be chewed out so many times before you learn. If you're there, say man. It, it says, says yet, yet now, if thou were to forgive their sins, this is Moses talking to God, because of what they've done, you can read the chapter, but he goes, yet, yet now, if you will forgive their sins, and if not, blot me out, I pray thee, out of where thy book, which thou hast written. He thought, he thought he could, could become, become the Christ, Christ and take, take all their things, things and said, blot me out of there for all them. 
Blot me out. Look at what, look at what the Father said in the next verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever sinned against me, him I will blot out of my book. Ouch. That's, That's people, people say, say stuff, and I'll get to the last verse in Revelation. Nobody, Nobody wants, wants their name blocked out of the book of the living. Amen. Amen. But he, he said, said here, the, the soul, soul that sent us, that word out of my, my book, or blot, is mach. It's, it's a Hebrew word, means this. this. To, to properly to stroke, stroke or, or to, to rub, rub or, or to, to erase. erase. Now, now we, we know in Revelation in the last chapter it says the same word. It says, I will take your part out. out. These, These are, are the, the verses, verses I talk to Calvinism, Calvinism that puts a stop to their belief. I don't, I don't think anybody in here wants their name blocked out, out of the book of life. life. Amen. Amen. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. know. I can stand what Moses said. Hey, 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 hey. I, know I know they messed, messed up, up and they said, block, block me out of your book. book. I wonder if God, God really knew his heart and said, no, no, those that sin against me. See, See God, God already, already knows before, before the foundation of the earth who are the goats, goats and who are the sheep. He knows who's written in his book and who will be blocked out of his book. I think God is not us or we wouldn't be in here. In Ezekiel, to back this up, in Ezekiel 18.4, in Ezekiel 18.4, and I'm going to read it, you guys can write it down. In Ezekiel 18.4 says this, and look at, what, look at what God says, Behold, all, not some, not a little, but everything, everyone from Adam until the last breath, he says, for all souls are mine. All souls are mine. Wow. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that be not afraid, I mean, I'm sorry. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Death, in this instance, becomes the portal to everlasting death and damnation. It's a scary thought right there. Matthew said this in Matthew 10, 28. Jesus told him, and be not afraid of them that can kill your body. Be not afraid of them, but are able to kill your soul, but rather kill him that is able to destroy both soul and body in Everybody, Everybody thinks, thinks only a soul, soul will be in hell, hell but no, there's a body. body. You don't, don't believe me? Go, go read, read the rich man in Lazarus, where, where he says he saw, he tastes, he feels, he looked upon, he thought. It's, it's, an inter inter it's, scary, it's scary right, right there, there without, without Jesus Christ. Christ. It's, it's scary, scary without, without the Lord. That's why I keep telling people it's called dead man walking until you receive Jesus Christ and you're full of life. And we, we have, have it. it. Amen. Amen. In, In Psalm 69, verse 28, it says this. Psalm 69, verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. They shall be cut off from life. In Luke 10, 20, it says this. Nevertheless, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Do you understand right now each one of us, our name is written in heaven in a book? Can you comprehend that? Someday that book will be open and we'll see that. And the names are going to be called out. That's going to be a beautiful day. Some, Some of us are, are getting, getting older and can't, can't wait, wait for that, that day, day, man. <laughs> I hear it so often. I, 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 I earn for that day. But if God has me here for a reason for one more soul to come to eternity, I will spend as much time as he wants me to upon this earth for the lost. 
I don't, don't want to go, go there alone. alone. I, I want to go with as many people God gives me to go with. Amen. Amen. In Revelation 13, 8, everybody, everybody loves, loves the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. It's, it's the, the revelation, revelation of our Lord and Je our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus the Christ. It's, it's all, all about him and what's to come and how it's going to look and what's going to happen. happen. A lot, a lot of, of fearful, fearful things, things and you could say, say that's in there, but it's a glorious sin. sin. Wow. wow. In, in verse 8, 8 in Revelation chapter, chapter 13, and, and all that dwell upon, upon the earth shall worship him, whose name are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. If, if you're, you're not, not written in the book of life, you will be worshiping somebody else. else. It's, it's black, black and white, white. remember that. Verse, Verse 9 says this, if any man has an ear, let him hear. If you have an ear today, hear what the Lord is speaking to you. That you have life and you have it more abundantly. We need to act like we have that life. We need to live like we have eternal life. We need to have our desires up there and not here. Oh, help, help me, Lord, Lord help, help me, Lord. Lord. In Revelation 3, 5, you, you can, can read, read verse 4 and read, read this chapter. chapter. I'm, I'm just, just using this verse. He says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed with the white clothing or remnant. And, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before the Father and before the angels. Wherein the just lives by faith. He that has a son has life. In verse 6 it says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the churches. I am so thankful I can stand up here and say our names won't be blocked out of the book of life. We have that choice that we have called upon him. and We made that decision we're going to follow Jesus. And we're, we're going to be, be obedient, obedient unto, unto him. In, In Revelation 17, 8, it says this. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. So when we know where this beast is coming from. He was and he was. He was. There's a lot of teachings on this going all the way back from Nimrod that died as one of the beasts and goes on and on. It's a deep, deep teaching. So many different theologians see it so many different ways. I'm, I'm just, just going to read it as it states. It, it says, says, The beast that hath thou sawest was, and is not, and shall send out of the bottom of the pit, and go into per perdition. And, and they that dwell upon earth shall wonder, whose, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundations of the world, where they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Do you know... Right, right there, there it's, it's said there, there and the reason I brought this verse is because of this. It says, from the foundations of the world. That means before this world started, your name was put in that book. And then it says, those that look upon him, things weren't in that book. They were blotted out. We do have sheep today, and we do have goats. People don't like to hear that. Not, Not everybody's, everybody's going to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. Some, Some reject Jesus. Jesus. We have atheists, atheists out there. We, we have, people have people that just deny God. God. We, we have people, people that don't want to live because it's a hard life. life. They, they want their fun. They, they want, want that. that. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, the best thing you can do is call upon Jesus Christ. Christ. It's a, a life-changing life thing. In Revelation 21, verse 27, and, and there shall in no wise enter into anything that is defiled, neither whatsoever worketh the abomination or maketh the lie, but they that were, I mean, they, they that are written in the book of life. Only those that are written in the book of life is entering into his kingdom. Only those that are written in that book of life will see his throne someday. Have you, Have you ever, ever tried, tried to imagine, imagine what, what the throne of God looks like and what, what we will see in the, the, the holiness and the pureness of all that he is on his throne? Revelation 22, 19. 
It says, says, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, listen to this, God shall take away his part out of the book of the life. That means he will erase it or he will remove. Wow. Don't mess around with God's word. It is what it is and just believe it. I don't need to add to it. I don't need to take away from it. But he says there, that, that he, he will take, take away his part out of the book of life. And he doesn't stop there. And out of the holy city, and from the things that are written in this book, of all the promises I give you, those will be taken away. Lord, thank you for your beautiful salvation for us. 20 verse 12 of Revelations, and I saw the dead. Can you imagine seeing this in the vision? He said, I saw the dead, small and great, Little in kings, nothing to some that thought they were the greatest, to the least of them all, to the greatest of them all. He said, I saw this, the great, stand before God. So someday we all will stand before God. And he knows your motive, he knows your heart, he knows your desires. He knows everything about you. When you stand before him, you will give an account. It says this, and the, did it say book? Or does it say books? It, it says, says the, the books, books were open, and, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And, and the, the dead were judged out of those things which are written in those books according to their works. This, this is the separation book that contains the name of those that will eternal inherit eternal life. There are books recorded everything and good deeds that we do, it seems here, doesn't it? Everything, Everything that we do, we do every God word that we speak is taken into account, account, account in the day of judgment, it says in Matthew chapter 12, I believe verse 34, somewhere around there, 35. Every idle word that you shall speak will take into account of judgment thereof. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. We speak Jesus, we're justified. We speak against Jesus, we will be condemned. There is death and life in the power of the tongue. Remember that. And those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. I want to close with the Old Testament in Daniel chapter 12. If you want to turn there, I'll wait. Take a drink. You there say amen. Daniel. Daniel. Amen. Amen. It, it says, says and at that, that time shall Michael, Michael stand up. The great prince, prince which stands for, for the children of thy people. people. Thank, Thank you. you. The, the same, same one that would be making an accusation against Satan. He stands, stands up for God's, God's people. people. And, and there, there shall be a time, time of trouble such as never been since. since. There was a nation, even to the same time, and that thy, I mean, the time of thy people shall be delivered, and every one that shall be found written in the book. It's not just in the Old Testament, it's not just in the New Testament, it's all through his word, there is a book which we're written in. No matter the time that we'll never see and never have seen since day one, there is time coming called Jacob's, Jacob's Trouble. But I'm, I'm glad, glad the last one says there, the people, the people shall, shall be delivered and every one that shall be found written in the book. I will be delivered because I'm written in his book. I have hope because I'm written in his book. Not only eternal life, but that he has put my name in his book. The name that I was given, I think that's a blessing that your name is in the book of God. That's, That's something, something we should, should walk, walk out of here, here with more hope than we've ever had. With the, the more, more humble of a heart. heart. Because, because of God's mercy and love for us. He created a book before the foundations of the earth. And he put our names in them. Knowing this day is the day we call upon his name. Amazes me. Amazes me. You know, 
Fear is the beginning of wisdom. But wisdom is something we always should seek above everything and anything else. See, I, I pray for the wisdom of God and the revelation of His Son, Jesus Christ. I pray for that knowledge and understanding, but I seek wisdom. And lately I've been seeking it more and more, just His wisdom. Because wisdom is the best thing that we can obtain. It's the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled more with the Holy Spirit than I've ever been filled with. I want my cup to run over. Amen? I told that again to someone the other day. He says, I don't see the cup half, and I don't see the cup half full, I don't see it half empty. I don't look at it either way. I said, well, you're right, neither do I. I look at it as a psalmist. I pick it up, and I look from the bottom up, and my cup always runneth over. No matter how much water in there, when I look at it this way, I'm looking at God, and my cup always runneth over. He just looked at me. Hmm. Interesting. Wherever we at, show Christ. Christ. Amen. You, you have, have eternal, eternal life. life. I've, I've seen, seen more smiles today than I've seen in a while. Because you know you, know you walk, walk out and say, I got your life. life. And, and I, I have more about it. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, I brought your word as you had told me to. Been obedient to you. Let that word pierce the hearts of your children, Father. The hope that you have given each one of us today that we are written in your beautiful book. We thank, we thank you for that, Father. But now, now I pray, Father, Father that we would share this with other people so their names. You said you have sent the pastors, you sent the teachers, you sent them, Father. How can they hear unless someone goes and speaks your word? So I pray you put that burning fire within each one of our hearts that we need to share the gospel more and more. We need to be a living example of the gospel. Not, not just in the body, body not, not just in church, church not, not just from the podium, but in our entire life. life. In, in home alone, in home with our family, in the restaurants, in the grocery stores, stores we need to be who you have called us to be. I pray for that change in each one of us today. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Thank, Thank you guys, guys for coming, coming out today. today.